Fast food as we know it began as a wholesome family experience in the 1940s with drive through restaurants and simple four-item menus. But today it has evolved into something different. Menu items have gotten more extreme. The quadruple bypass burger has 20 slices of bacon. And more people are eating more fast food more often. The, uh, the Big Macs are great, the quarter pounder with cheese. I mean, I, it's great. What is it about fast food that makes it taste so good while at the same time making us feel so bad? And how bad is fast food for your body, really? In this video, we'll be taking you minute by minute through your body when you eat fast food, starting with your brain, through your stomach, arteries, and ending with total digestion. As soon as the food touches your tongue, a signal is sent to the brain activating the reward system, and your body releases a surge of feel-good endorphins and dopamine. You may feel a sense of euphoria, excitement, bliss, and relaxation as your brain's pleasure center lights up and gets excited by the different sensory properties of the food you're eating. Carefully engineered blends of salt, sugar, and fat, three food properties we have a primal love for thanks to our evolution, thrill and stimulate your brain to the point that the dopamine response produced can be as big as doing extreme stunts or even watching porn. But it's not just the salt, sugar, and fat, it's much, much more than that. Fast food has been designed in a lab to be craveable. You see, the magic of McDonald's french fries, Pizza Hut's pizzas, or Wendy's Baconator doesn't just come from superior potatoes, fancy cheese, or the best cuts of bacon, but instead each minute detail of the food is the work of brilliant scientists, mathematicians, and flavorists. Mathematical modeling finds the precise amount of sugar needed to bring your meal up to the bliss point, or the optimal concentration of sugar known to maximize sensory pleasure. That bold taste you get from a Doritos Locos Taco from Taco Bell, for example, isn't the result of their superior quality ingredients, but carefully layered natural flavor extracts. Beef flavors, nacho flavors, cheese flavors, all injected into the food to give cheap ingredients an unmatchable boost in fake flavor. Even the colors of the packaging and the store decor have been carefully selected to stimulate your brain and to generate maximal fun and excitement and maybe even a little sprinkling of nostalgia for your childhood too. All this helps to explain why, despite our best efforts, home-cooked meals just don't really have the same sparkle. And maybe that's why one in three Americans now prefers to eat at least one fast food meal every single day. In one study, rats were fed a fast food diet for two weeks and then switched back to normal food. After sampling the fast food, it took an average of 14 days before the rats became interested in eating their normal food again, with many of the rats actually choosing to literally starve for several days instead of eating. Apparently, there was just no being satisfied by normal food once the rats had tasted that sweet, sweet taste of natural flavors. The more fast food you eat, the less delicious, more subtle, natural foods begin to taste in comparison, and the more fast food you crave. Just try a little taste. <sighs> I can't, I can't. Come here, baby. <laughs> Okay. The flood of dopamine that is released when you eat a perfectly engineered burger is responsible for much, much more than just making your food taste good. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter involved in habit, addiction, and neuroplasticity. Dopamine's main function isn't pleasure, it's learning and motivation. Basically, anytime dopamine is released, you're more likely to repeat the experience that caused that release. In other words, regularly eating fast food amplifies and sustains your drive and motivation to continue eating fast food. And studies show that the more often you eat it, the more frequent and powerful your cravings can become. 
Rapidly digested fast food begins to hit your bloodstream just 15 minutes after swallowing your first bite thanks to the presence of refined carbs. This process can begin even faster if you've opted to wash your meal down with a sugary soda. The elements that make fast food fast also contribute to their rapid digestion. Factory processing reduces the time needed to cook these things, but also the time needed for our bodies to break them down. Flour that has been pulverized to a fine dust becomes your bun, beef ground to a paste becomes your burger, and potatoes that have been razor sliced and coated in a fine chemical sugar called dextrose become your fries. This refining process, along with the removal of natural fiber, allows your body to break down and rapidly digest fast food so that it moves from your stomach to your lower intestine to your bloodstream almost in an instant. These foods provide such an instant boost in energy in fact that they're the trusted energy source of extreme ultra marathon runners competing in Badwater, one of the most difficult runs in the entire world. Badwater spans 48 hours and 135 miles of desert and is run in sweltering 127 degree heat. One runner claimed that she fills up on processed foods like fries, Twinkies, and candy every 30 minutes during this difficult run stating that simple sugars are great fuel for a race because my body never really has to work to digest it and I don't have to divert blood from my muscles to my GI tract. Because the simple sugars in fast food hit your bloodstream so quickly, your body is flooded with an abundance of glucose at once and your blood sugar and insulin levels rise rapidly. At first, you'll enjoy a surge of energy like the bad water runners did. But unlike the bad water runners, you probably aren't in the middle of a 48 hour run. So the overflow of glucose in your blood is unlikely to be used and will be quickly turned to fat by the hormone insulin instead. By hour three, your sugar high will have subsided and you'll start to feel hungry again, even though the typical fast food meal contains almost as much as an entire day's worth of calories. This is thanks to the blood sugar peak and subsequent rapid crash caused by excess insulin. This dip in essential blood sugar stresses the body and your body responds by, well, basically panicking. At this point, you might start to experience cravings, particularly toward unhealthy, easily digestible foods like what you've just eaten. As your body attempts to restore your blood sugars to a healthier level, you might also be experiencing mood swings and irritability, shakiness, nausea, or even headaches, depending on how extreme the insulin response was from your individual body. This blood sugar roller coaster and these subsequent mood swings is just one of the many reasons a 2009 study found that those who eat fast food every day are 51% more likely to be depressed. The sugar, fat, and salt you've consumed are now circulating in your blood, pumping through your veins to provide your cells with energy. While this is happening, something very dangerous begins to occur within your arteries. A team of scientists wanted to see if eating deep fried food had any effect on our arteries in the short term. They fed subjects french fries and then four hours later slipped their arms into blood pressure cuffs, squeezing it to cut off the blood flow for a few minutes. Normally, once the cuff is released, your oxygen-starved arteries open wider so blood can come rushing back in, just like you would suck in more air after holding your breath. Before the french fries, the volunteers' arteries dilated normally, opening 7% larger after being released. But afterwards, the volunteers' arteries barely opened at all, less than 1%. Restricted arteries slow your blood flow, making you feel tired and immediately increasing your risk of heart attack and stroke. In fact, just one fast food meal per week, just one, is enough to increase your risk of heart attack by 20%. Though there are many elements in fast food that digest rapidly as we've discussed, there are also many that digest very slowly or not at all. Fatty burgers, deep fried french fries, and creamy dressings all come together to make your typical fast food meal a delicious greasy treat, but also to make it difficult for your body to fully break down and absorb. This fat can sit in your stomach for days. Some reports estimate that it can take up to 36 hours for the fattiest parts of a Big Mac to leave your system completely. This is some of the reason many people report feeling gassy, bloated, or well worse, after eating fast food. 
As for the parts of your meal that don't digest at all, chemical concoctions known as additives and fillers are added to fast and processed foods to perform a variety of functions. And of the 72 ingredients in a Big Mac, quite a few fit this profile. Some, like calcium chloride, are what make the pickles in your burger taste salty without increasing the actual amount of sodium. While others, like dimethyl polysiloxane, a commonly used polymer found in shampoo, skin creams, lubricant and famous for giving silly putty its shape is an obviously essential ingredient added to prevent oil splash during frying. Many of these compounds are clearly not food exactly and so your body can't digest them. This is an additional factor that might help to explain why this food tastes very good but can make you feel very bad very fast. Actually, these compounds are so foreign to your body that scientists have found that the cells in your gut respond to fast food the same way it might an infection. In a 2018 study, researchers put mice on a typical fast food diet, high in fat and sugar and low in fiber. In just one month, researchers discovered a shocking truth. The mice had developed a significant inflammatory response, almost as if they had come down with a bad bacterial infection. When they switched back to the regular rodent chow, the inflammation calmed down, but their immune systems remained on high alert, ready to attack. Apparently, this food had actually caused changes to the rodent's DNA, such that their immune systems were now permanently more aggressive, which sounds like a good thing, but according to the study authors, it can result in systemic inflammation and an increased risk of diabetes and atherosclerosis. I want to be clear that the point of this video is not to scare you into never eating your favorite fast food again. <laughs> I'm not one of those people who believes that everyone should just eat like goji berries and flax seeds. Provided you're in good health, the risk is extremely low in enjoying your favorite fast food every once in a while. Despite the parallels, at the end of the day, it is still food, it's not a drug. But I think it's totally unfair and frankly a little bit corrupt that this information isn't offered up to consumers by the companies that are serving this food to billions of people every single year. We all have the right to choose what we put in our bodies, but if that choice is impaired because this information is not readily available to us, it's not really the same thing. You don't already know I used to be obese, I lost 100 pounds, and though it wasn't fast food's fault that I was obese, it was my fault obviously, it certainly would have been helpful to understand why certain foods make us feel terrible, both physically and mentally, and yet it's so hard to stop eating them. I think a lot of people want to reduce food to just its caloric content. If you're not getting fat off it or you don't care about your body weight, then what does it matter what you eat? But that is just not true. And as we go on and nutrition science evolves, people are starting to think about food as information. Information that tells certain genes to turn on and turn off and information that influences hormone production. So I think it's very important to scrutinize any food that you're going to be putting in your body with any sort of regularity. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more science-based health, weight loss, and nutrition tips. Also a disclaimer, the timestamps for what times things were happening in the body, they're definitely not going to be perfectly accurate. I checked them based on a few different articles regarding digestion and fast food, but at the end of the day, A, everybody's body is totally different, and B, I'm not a biologist or like a doctor, so I don't know for sure. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something cool. I know that this was like some of the coolest stuff I learned last year. It's crazy that, you know, the food that we put in our body can be so dramatic, but it is. <laughs>